When a baby cries for the first time, it indicates that it is afraid of the unfamiliar world, then, when it tastes its mother's warm milk, it feels loved and realizes that maybe life isn't as scary as it seems. But what happens if the mother who should allay the baby's fears shows you how cruel life can be? Does the baby then hope for a savior? This story may be about a baby boy who was abandoned shortly after birth and who spent his first few hours in agony and hunger since the nurse who was supposed to be caring for him neglected to feed him. The entire narrative begins with Lisa Marie, the baby's mother, leaving the hospital covertly as soon as her child is delivered. No one is able to explain how she managed to do this, unlike many who were raised alongside boys. Lisa was raised by her father and her older brothers. Her mother passed away when she was three years old, leaving her to be raised by them. Despite this, Lisa was very ladylike, and her father went above and beyond to make sure she didn't feel her mom's absence by braiding her hair and purchasing brightly colored dresses, but he was never able to get it right. She didn't have many friends or admirers because of her strange sense of style and her tall hairstyles, it didn't help that she had to wear braces and spectacles. When everyone else was receiving extravagant Valentine's Day gifts and dramatic prom proposals, the girl was mostly shunned by her peers, nevertheless, in her penultimate year of high school. Elisa gained an admirer named Ron, since Ron had recently enrolled the previous year and was obviously intelligent. The principal asked Elisa to show him around and assist Ron with his coursework. Ron overcame her discomfort, and eventually, he and Lisa started dating. Although not naive, she was eager to please her boyfriend and they began doing things that made her uncomfortable during their relationship. This led to her getting pregnant, which she suspected when her period was late but ignored until she began experiencing severe symptoms. She knew she had to take a test, so she got a pregnancy kit and found out she was pregnant. The clerk at the store gave her directions to an abortion facility, and after confirming her pregnancy, she decided to follow the attendant's silent advice and have the baby aborted. One day, she skipped school and went to the facility, which looked scary, but she was already determined. Just when she was about to enter, she saw two young people sobbing. By the entrance, their friend had died during the procedure, this experience served as a wake-up call. She realized she couldn't go through with the abortion, but she didn't know what to do next. Elisa couldn't talk to anyone because she was so embarrassed. She ended up terminating the pregnancy. When she departed from home, the adolescent merely left a note stating her intention to discover herself. Before Elisa fled away, her family recognized that she wasn't herself, but they assumed her. Sadness was due to heartbreak, their best efforts at consolation were met with her firm belief that she required solitude to recover, thus they had no choice but to allow her be. They reached out to her ex-boyfriend in an effort to get further details after seeing the note, but he was unaware of anything, they were completely ignorant that she was expecting a child, despite their best efforts to discover the news. Elisa was terrified she was going to become pregnant despite the dire warning she had received from her father and brothers. She was afraid her overprotective siblings would take matters into their own hands if they discovered the truth. The months preceding the baby's birth were the worst of Elisa's life. The bay barely managed to secure her a job washing dishes at a restaurant with limited options at her disposal. Elisa realized she couldn't manage caring for the baby alone, despite the challenges. She resolved to keep her family out of the situation when she brainstormed. Alternatives to avoid having the baby in her life, fate intervened while she was at work, her water broke, rushed to the hospital, Elisa endured hours of agonizing labor before the baby arrived, when the nurses returned the baby to her for feeding, they discovered only a note, his first name should be Bill, and his second name Carrie, the urgency of the situation led a nurse to inadvertently neglect feeding little Bill, fortunately, Anna, a hospital volunteer, overheard discussions about the abandoned baby and took immediate action, finding Bill alone and crying in the nursery, Anna promptly prepared formula, easing his hunger, meanwhile, the nurse, assuming Elisa had reclaimed her child, frantically searched for Bill, only to discover Anna caring for him in the office adjacent to the nursery, from that moment, Anna dedicated herself to Bill's welfare, arriving early at the hospital to feed, comfort, and oversee him until her other duties called, despite her efforts, one day Anna noticed Bill's breathing becoming labored, fearing the worst. She urgently summoned the nurses, following thorough tests. Doctors diagnosed Bill with fluid in his respiratory system, complicating efforts to find him a permanent home through social services. They kept Bill in the hospital until he recovered fully, 
and the social services representative was called back to take him, Anna, aware of their efforts to find Bill a home, didn't want him placed just anywhere, she confided in a friend about. Bill's story and her growing attachment to him, expressing her wish to find someone suitable to adopt him, unbeknownst to Anna, her statement was exactly what her friend needed to hear, her friend's sister had struggled with infertility for years, enduring failed IVF treatments and fertility procedures, desiring to adopt a baby, Anna's friend's sister seized the opportunity upon hearing about Bill, upon visiting the hospital and meeting Bill, they were captivated and resolved to adopt him, Anna lovingly dressed him up and groomed him in anticipation of their arrival, her joy was boundless upon receiving the news of the adoption, and the hospital management was equally pleased, they coordinated with social services to expedite the paperwork for the adoption, with everything falling into place seamlessly, Bill soon embarked on his journey to his new home, Anna was honored to be named his godmother, a role she was undoubtedly well suited for, although Bill may never recall the circumstances of his birth without being told, one thing remains certain, he was fortunate to find a loving family that he deserved, that's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story, a couple's joyful adoption of a child turns into a heartbreaking decision six months later, leaving them perplexed and deeply troubled, it all began with Jessica's nightly routine of singing lullabies to her six-year-old adopted daughter, Namada, however, one fateful night, instead of Drifting off to sleep with a smile, Namata lay there, seemingly devoid of emotion, Jessica, assuming fatigue, continued with her routine until Namata abruptly sat up, her face etched with sorrow, questioning why Jessica had done it, taken aback, Jessica recoiled, trying to comprehend Namata's sudden agitation, despite her shock, Jessica approached Namata cautiously, only to be sternly told not to touch her. This was a sight of Namata Jessica had never seen before, leaving her uncertain about how. To proceed, in a moment of unexpected clarity, Namata confessed her longing for her biological mother, a revelation that caught Jessica off guard. As far as Jessica knew, Namata had never mentioned her biological mother before, leaving her puzzled. Carefully, Jessica tucked Namata into bed, trying to process the newfound information. A quick kiss on Namata's forehead, usually met with a smile, went unnoticed this time. Jessica confided in her husband, Adam, about the unsettling encounter both. Grappling with the weight of Namata's longing for her unknown past. Adam shared Jessica's concern, deeply troubled by the possibility that Namata's words might hold truth, signaling a deeper underlying issue, as parents to four children, including their lively three-year-old, Tyler, the couple had contemplated expanding their family through adoption. The idea brought a mixture of anticipation, doubts, and careful consideration, yet, their sheer desire to provide a loving home for an abandoned child outweighed their apprehensions, their journey led them to Namata. A sorrowful five-year-old girl from Uganda, whose heartbreaking story of neglect stirred empathy within Adam and Jessica, learning of Namata's struggles, abandoned by a grieving mother overwhelmed with loss, compelled them to mend the fractures in her world, with heartfelt promises and unwavering determination, they embraced the opportunity to shower Namata with the love and care she had been denied. Amidst bureaucratic hurdles and moments of frustration, Adam and Jessica persisted, navigating through paperwork to make Namata an official member of their family. Welcomed with open arms by her new siblings, Namata was greeted with thoughtful gestures and heartfelt embraces, culminating in a tearful expression of gratitude. However, the language barrier presented a challenge. When Namata was unfamiliar with English, hindering communication with her new family, nevertheless, the family refused to let the language barrier impede their connection with Namata, despite her limited communication through signs, her infectious laughter became the household's most cherished sound, spreading happiness to all. The Davis family didn't merely adopt a child, they welcomed a beacon of joy into their lives, witnessing firsthand the transformative power of love in the weeks following Namata's arrival. Jessica wasted no time enrolling her in English classes, aiming to bridge the communication gap. Over time, Namata's proficiency in English improved, forging stronger bonds with each family member. After six months of dedicated learning, Namata achieved fluency in English, a milestone celebrated with joyous festivities by the Davis family. However, tragedy loomed on the horizon, unbeknownst to them. It all began on a fateful night when Namata tearfully confessed her longing for her biological mother. Initially, Jessica and Adam brushed off the revelation, 
Understanding the natural yearning of a child for her parent, despite their efforts to provide love and care, Namita's persistent longing remained, determined to ease Namita's pain, Jessica and Adam spared no effort in showering her with affection and attention, from shopping trips for clothes and toys to bedtime stories, they sought to bring comfort to Namita's heart, yet, despite their best intentions, Namita's sorrow persisted, one Sunday evening, after returning from the cinema, Namata broke down once more, pleading for the chance to see her mother, even if just once, fear radiated from her eyes when she trembled, resisting Adam's attempts to comfort her, leaving the family shaken by the depth of her anguish. When Namata looked at each of them with fear in her eyes, Jessica approached her gently, her voice calm and reassuring, we would never hurt you, baby, you're safe with us, she whispered, hoping to alleviate Namata's distress, uncertain if her words would make a difference. Jessica's heart swelled with relief when Namata's tears finally ceased, she guided Namata to her room, silently. Contemplating the turmoil within the young girl's heart, the unsettling revelation prompted Jessica and Adam to confront the truth behind Namata's adoption. After giving her some time to process, they summoned Namata to their room for a heartfelt conversation. It took patience and empathy, but eventually, Namata confided in her adoptive parents, unveiling a narrative that shattered their preconceptions. Contrary to the agency's portrayal, Namata recounted tales of her devoted mother, who, despite financial struggles, prioritized her children's well-being above all else, each sacrifice painted a portrait of unwavering love and sacrifice, leaving Jessica profoundly moved, the revelation of her mother's anguish and Namata's yearning for her presence pierced Jessica's heart, unveiling the depths of the young girl's longing, with tears streaming down her cheeks, Jessica embraced Namata, her resolve crystallizing, I promise to take you home to your mom, she vowed, knowing that Namata's rightful place was by her mother's side, though wrenching, Jessica understood that true love meant letting go, even if it meant relinquishing the precious bond they had forged. When Jessica ran from the room, her heart heavy with sorrow and resolve, she knew that Namata's journey back to her mother was the ultimate act of love. Despite their material comforts, Jessica realized that nothing could replace the irreplaceable. A mother's unwavering love and presence in a child's life, it was insufficient. Reason to take away a mother's beloved kid, before they came into her life, Namata was doing well, they had a strong bond, Jessica thought that this love would get them through difficult times, intrigued and worried, Adam and Jessica made the decision to look into it more, they were desperate to know the truth about this terrible circumstance, following a comprehensive investigation, the Devisas unearthed a startling discovery, Nam's mother had been duped, she was informed that Namata had been chosen by the Devisas to receive educational sponsorship overseas, with the goal of her eventually returning to Uganda, Nam's mother freely relinquished her, hopeful for her child's future, not realizing that her gesture of trust would bring them eternally apart. Namata and her mother had also been promised weekly phone calls by the Devisas. Namata had been told everything in her language, so she was taken aback when weeks went by with no word. She persevered till she finally lost it, conversely. The Devisas were also taken advantage of, the adoption officials had concocted a false story to trick them into unintentionally taking part in the illegal act of kidnapping a child, Adam and Jessica were devastated by this revelation, feeling deeply betrayed and horrified, enraged, they promised to bring Namata's family and other youngsters in similar circumstances to justice equipped with the facts, the Devisas set out to make things right and bring Namata back to her devoted mother, they contacted Reunite Uganda's creator, Karen Riley, asking for advice and assistance, Karen, who was well known for her commitment to bringing families back together, volunteered to help, she decided to look for Namata's real mother and figure out how to bring her and her daughter back together, Karen finally called back after four excruciating weeks to share the good news, I found her, I located the mother of the girl, Jessica heard those words and her heart skipped a beat, it meant it was almost Time to say goodbye, even though she was ecstatic that Namata would finally be able to talk to her mother again, she was more completely destroyed by this understanding than by any agony she had ever felt. Jessica went over to Nam's room after the call, Jessica began to tell Namata the good news, but before she could say anything more, Namata shot into her arms and gave her the most hugging experience ever. I will always remember this, I'm grateful, mom, I cherish you, Namata declared, Jessica felt relief from those comments right away, Namata had started calling her mother earlier, but this time it felt different, 
it seemed like a recognition of their intense affection for one another, as scheduled, Karen's video call started at precisely 6.00 p.m. That evening, Jessica was flooded with feelings when she answered the phone. The symptoms of restless nights over her daughter's absence were evident in Nam's mother, who had black bags under her eyes and had lost weight, Jessica was. Likewise unable to ignore Namita's uncanny similarity to her mother. Namata resembled her exactly, how could someone be so heartless as to rip apart these sweet souls? Jessica pondered, Jessica's heart skipped a beat when she observed the mother and daughter chatting. She had never seen Namata this pleased before, even though she was unable to understand the words being said, even when her mother sung a song to her, the young child jumped up and danced. Jessica was crying so hard she couldn't even stop herself from crying since the song was so wonderfully sung and so passionate, Jessica and Adam decided it was time to pursue justice after the call, Adam contacted several news organizations, revealing the startling reality about Nam's adoption, he was furious and fervently committed justice, proposing that the adoption agency be held accountable for their illegal acts, he underlined how important it is to stop these dishonest activities, in the meantime, Namita's biological family was reunited with her by the Devises without delay, the reunion was painstakingly and painstakingly planned, including working with Karen Riley and her group, Reunite Uganda, which was instrumental in helping to manage the sensitive proceedings, the realization that Nam would be leaving was a bittersweet pill to take as arrangements came together, the Devises had lawfully adopted Nam Ada and should have been allowed to retain her, according to those who opposed the reunion, Adam and Jessica didn't waver in their belief in the face of these challenges, they argued. That Namata was a person and someone's biological kid, not a thing to be maintained, Namata had a right to know the truth and to her family's affection, since the legal paperwork had been obtained by fraud, Adam and Jessica believed that keeping her after learning the truth would be illegal, they understood that they would be just like the masked kidnappers, motivated by this conviction, they set out to reverse the adoption, they planned a unique event in their house as a farewell, there were friends and people who were concerned about Namata. They talked on how much joy she provided to everyone and reminisced about her, kind words and hugs drifted into the air, each hug saying, even if you go, we'll keep you in our hearts, the Devises expressed their gratitude to Namata for bringing joy into their home at the ceremony, Namata hugged each of them in turn, beginning with Jessica, she even read sincere letters she had written to herself thanking people for their love and support, when Namata's siblings read aloud their letters, tears streamed down their faces, a few days later, Namata traveled to Uganda for the much-needed reunion with her adoptive parents, at the airport, Nam's mother was waiting for them, when she spotted Namata, she rushed up to greet her, kissing and sweeping her off her feet, she greeted the couple sincerely and, overcome with delight, expressed her surprise at seeing her daughter again, before leaving for the US, Jessica and her spouse spent a few days with the family, a few weeks later, with Karen's assistance, they were able to have a phone conversation with Namata, Jessica dried her tears when the screen turned black, even though she missed Namata, she experienced a sense of warmth in her heart from knowing that they had a hand in bringing Namata back to her family, even though Namata had left, Nam's family was complete once more, and Jessica and her family were happy to be a part of this wonderful tale of reconciliation, the Devises were, happy to be a part of a story that was about righting wrongs and putting happiness back in its proper place because they knew they were doing the right thing. They carried out their campaign for justice and raised a loud voice against human trafficking with the support of the media and numerous law enforcement organizations, their voices, along with many others, sparked a movement calling for reform. The cry for justice became a formidable force as their message spread through social media and news outlets. This movement was not limited to Namata. Other narratives akin to hers started to surface. The FBI was instrumental in removing the many layers of dishonesty around the guilty agency by utilizing its experience in fighting human trafficking. In the end, justice was served. After learning about Namata's account and others similar to it, the State Department acted decisively, closing the offending agency. The result was a victory for Namata and all the victims who were silenced, not just about bringing an unfair agency to its knees. The Devises were praised for their bravery and tenacity in defending justice for the weak and defenseless in society, together with law enforcement and the media. Above is today's story. If you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. See you next time.